Hello and welcome to this video. Uh, my name is Will and I teach computing at the University of New England in Australia. Uh, now let's just leave that slide so that you can get scrub back and get the links. Uh, the University of New England, well, New England is the northern part of New South Wales and we're a little bit inland and we're a regional university in a mostly rural area. Uh, so most of our students are online, some of them rural and regional students, some employed students, mature age working students in cities, some students overseas. A challenge for us. I'm also involved in lots of outreach events for school children and computing outreaches for schools like this one with Cisco are often very in person. They're very playful with robots physically in the room together, programming the robots to do interesting things uh, or primary school kids in a lab of computers, but also putting sticky notes all over a maze on the wall. If most of my students are online, the challenge for me is how can I bring that level of playfulness, fun, interaction with smart things to the materials that I use for my online students? Now, my approach to this, a long time ago, my PhD was past the Intelligent Book Project. And this was all about, you know, what if the AI, the model, was your partner instead of your marker and you could uh, play and work with it over various different kinds of um, graphical environment and graphical problems and see how things behave. So I wanted to bring that kind of spirit to it. Um, so the first thing I built, actually, was a custom front end framework called Beautiful for building these things because I found React and Vue and D3 and other ones too constraining and too verbose. Both. And I needed something that would let me build a wide variety of experiences quite quickly because it would often just be me coding them. Um, the first one that we tried, uh, the coding escape. So this was part of Far Out Science, an hour of code like um, activity. We we're in it first, snuck a bit of it into 2018, but let me show you 2019. And you kind of kind of see it's typical hour of code stuff, but we wanted one that we could be sure children hadn't seen before. Maze like environments. Um, uh, kind of a hybrid blocks programming environment that I developed also in, in Beautiful. Uh, but then we can drop in, OK, let's teach you algorithms by getting you to play a card game with a computer, see if you can recognize the algorithm that it's doing, see if you can turn the tables on it and play that algorithm back to the computer and win. A um, bit more blocks programming. Um, and then, well, OK, now let, let us show you the flood fill maze solving algorithm. Uh, let's then let you build that into a program. And then here's one we made earlier to see if we can help the ninja escape the maze. So we ran that for about 200 children over eight sessions over a couple of days. It worked very well with me beetling around in the background. Uh, the next one we did was for a first year um, electronics and computer architecture course. Now, it starts all the way down at things like Kirchhoff's current law and uh, Ohm's law. Uh, but because the models are compiled, then go up into the browser, we can do things like, look, here is a MOSFET. Uh, let's just play with it. And you kind of kind of see what the response of it is like uh, before we then go and say, well, OK, let's start building um, uh, building those MOSFETs and see how we can build logic gates out of them, see how we can build adders out of logic gates, see how we can um, build ripple carry adders and start watching the timing of these things behave as the carry ripples up uh, or ripples down through the circuit as, as we change the, uh, change the values. And so that one we did for about the first four or so uh, weeks of that particular uh, particular course before I moved on to the one I'm currently teaching, which is our um, computational thinking course. There's not a lot of this yet there yet because we're still writing it. But here I'm starting to build the uh, models. So they go into very markdown like um, lecture slides, except suddenly, you know, this one's behaving. This one suddenly got a diffusion simulation into it that automatically charts things. Um, let's go into the second one that now, uh, well, this has the um, uh, the lava maze, but a bit more of a cast of characters and various maze-like environments and coding environments built in there. Um, so that you can get familiarity of them through the through the uh, through the lectures as well uh, before we also start seeing turtle graphics environments uh, that you can program either in a blocks programming language or just with text uh, in, in JavaScript. And we can demo things like, you know, here is a mutual recursion doing Hilbert curve uh, for you. Uh, it's open source. Um, the uh, 1.0 release will probably be towards the end of the year when Scala 3 comes out, because at the moment it's Scala 2. Uh, there will also be JavaScript bindings for it. They kind of already are, but I haven't really advertised them uh, terribly much. Uh, trying to make it as easy to build as Markdown slides, but also with the benefit that you get from using software tools, that you can do things like continuous deployment. You commit a change to your notes and they uh, get automatically published up to the web.